Hello everyone, so this is going to be all about naming and writing reactions, so this is kind of the last part of chapter 6. Um, this says, identify the type of compound for each of the molecules below, and then it tells me I have three kind of, two different categories. Covalent, again, means, um, generally it means made out of uh, two nonmetals, and ionic usually means a metal and a nonmetal but we know that that can be a bit tricky. Um, so those are your two choices. First, I can see covalent or ionic. And kind of related to that, I say uh, if it's non-metals only, then it's got to be covalent. If there's a metal and a non-metal, then it might be ionic. I have to test it. Uh, within the covalent category, it says there's another layer of properties here. We can divide things into something that's binary or something that might be an acid. So acids are identifiable because they always start with a hydrogen in the, in the beginning of it. So if I see H at the beginning, I know it's an acid. Binary compounds just mean that there's only two atoms and one of them's not H. There's actually a third category here that's not provided as an option in this particular example, but it is, it, you might have another one which has multiple atoms, more than two. Um, and if I get that situation, I want to look at the back of the periodic table for the name, because that's where it is. All right, so this is kind of like a flow chart, right? The first question I ask is, is it covalent or ionic? And then I pick which path to follow. Um, if it's covalent, I have multiple types of compounds, and it might be. Okay, so we look at the first one, aluminum acetate here. And so my first question is, is this covalent or ionic? And I say, aluminum is on my periodic table as element number 13. So it's element number 13, which is right next to the stairs, but it is actually considered a metal, not a non-metal. Um, and then acetate, that's a funny word, that's on the back of the periodic table and it turns out to be a polyatomic group. So I have, um, which are, by the way, the polyatomics are almost always covalent um, for that part of the molecule, but when I take a covalent piece that has a charge and I connect it to aluminum, um, what I've got there is an ionic compound. This connection between these two things, aluminum and acetate, makes this ionic. Okay. Now for this bottom one, hydroiodic acid. Oh, acid. That word acid is here. So that must mean this guy has an H in it. Um, if it's an acid, it, the only way to be an acid is if it's a covalent compound. So I'm just going to write covalent acid. For the answer there. Okay, so we're going to continue to use this kind of logic where we go, is it covalent or ionic? And then if it's covalent, we have to figure out, is it an acid, a binary, or a polyatomic? Okay, so we already did this one. We said the aluminum acetate was an ionic compound. Hydroiodic acid is an acid, so that's got to be covalent. And it's an acid. Ammonium phosphate. Well, ammonium is a funny word. It doesn't sound like an element. So I'm going to look at the back of the periodic table, and it, it has this listed there with the name ammonium. It's the first one, NH4+. plus. Okay, and then the other part of that is a phosphate. Phosphate is also listed on the back. Um, let's see. All the way at the bottom, actually. So we got the first and the last on this thing on the back. And that one is listed as PO4-3-. All of these are covalent because there's no metal but it's a little tricky it's not covalent binary it's a covalent polyatomic which wasn't even really a choice in the problems so if I had to pick between between them I might just leave it as covalent and not say anything else it's definitely not an acid because there's not an H in the front these H's um, on the ammonium are part of the ammonium so I don't want to mix it up with with it being an acid for this one, 10, the symbol for 10, uh, I might not be sure about it, so I could go look it up 
in the textbook, but tin is Sn. So I look on the periodic table, and I find tin is element number 50. It's right next to a metalloid. Actually, it's next to two metalloids, GE and SB. But itself is a metal, so that makes this a metal. And carbonate is another one of those groups on the back of the periodic table. So here we have a covalent polyatomic group attached to a metal. So that's an ionic bond. This one, oh, look, so it says it's got a hydrogen in the front and it's aqueous. And when we name these things, that means the combination of hydrogen in the front and aqueous means that it's an acid. So if it's an acid, it has to be covalent. There are no um, ionic acids. Okay, so we've got to remember that. This one doesn't have H, so it's not an acid. Sulfur is element 16 and oxygen is 8. So they're both non-metals. So if they're non-metals, that means that it has to be covalent. And there's only two types of elements, so it's a covalent binary compound. Binary meaning two different elements. This one has H in the front and AQ, so very similar to E. And so by having an H in the front and AQ, it becomes an acid. Okay, uh, we already just did this one, so we're going to go H. Oh, H2SO4 liquid. So the only difference, these both still have H, but this one is liquid and this one is aqueous. It turns out for something to be an acid, it has to be dissolved in water. Otherwise, it's just a covalent compound. It's not binary because I have three different kinds of elements. So we're going to call this a covalent polyatomic compound. This one here, um, PBN2, let's see, PBN2, so N is uh, element number 7, it's a non-metal, and PB, PB is element 82, which is in group 14, all the way down, almost to the very bottom, so that's a metal, so if we have a metal and a non-metal, it's going to be an ionic complex. Okay, so now in part, the part, second part of this uh, page, we're asked to name it. And so aluminum is AL. And I know that because I looked at the periodic table where symbol number 13 is AL. And that says that it can have a 3 plus charge. So I'm just going to write this. Um, it's, it's, whenever it's in a complex, it's not the element. It's now an ion. So that means it has to have a charge. So then I need to know what an acetate group is. So this acetate, I look on the back of the table, and it says acetate can be listed as C2H3O2, and it has a minus one charge. Okay, so to make this a real complex, what I have to do is I have to balance the pluses and minuses. So if I have three pluses, just like when we were doing the Lewis structures, um, that means what I need to do is I gotta get three minuses. So I gotta multiply the whole purple group by three to get that. Uh, so I want to show that by putting brackets around the group and then a three after it. I wouldn't want to do it like this. I wouldn't want to show it like this because that looks like there's 23 oxygens, right? So I want to be really, really careful about how I show this three. I also don't want to make it seem like I have three aluminums because that actually makes the problem worse. That would give us a nine plus to have to, to balance out. So I don't want to do that. Okay, so this is the right way to write that complex. Now, hydroiodic acid. Well, it's an acid, so it has to have... Oops, I'm going to change the color, sorry. So it has to have an H. All acids have Hs. And then I want to look at the flow chart from the lecture notes. Um, let's see here. Okay, and so we see hydro. The root hydro only occurs right here. So there's the prefix hydro with some other word to explain what element is, and then it ends in ic acid. So that means that the compound in question must be in water. So right away I can also write aq. Anytime we see acid also means aq. So hydro and acid means aq. Hydro also means, if we trace this back, hydro also means that we answer no to this question. So we go back and we say, okay, the compound is an acid. Does the anion contain oxygen? So there's no oxygen in the complex if 
Uh, we answered no. So if we get to hydro, that means there's no oxygen. Okay. Although almost all of the groups on the back of the periodic table have oxygen in them. So when I see this word hydro, what it means to me is that I don't have a special group. I just need to look at this part, the root word, the root element, to figure out what this complex is. So iode sounds a lot like iodine, which is the element that has a symbol I. Um, there's no oxygen because I have hydro, so it must just be H and I combined together. And so then I go and look at the periodic table, and I see that iodine is in group 17, so that means it wants to get one more electron when it bonds, so it's going to be a minus one. Hydrogen likes to give up one electron, so it's a plus one. So I just need one of each of these to make a valid complex. Okay, so um, we did... We did this one, we did this one. Okay, so now we're going to do the next the next one here. And it says ammonium phosphate. And we already know that ammonium is from the back of the periodic table. So I'm just going to write down what that group is. And I'm, I'm going to write the charge. Now remember, when you're writing the complex, you can't write the charge as part of the structure. So you either write it below it or, or above it. You don't want to write it here like it is in the back of the periodic ta table because then it'll be confusing. It'll look like it's part of the of the structure of our compound and it's not because we have to cancel them out for it to be a compound. The phosphate group is on the bottom of that table and it says PO4 is a phosphate and PO4 has a 3 minus charge. Okay, so if I have a plus 1 and a 3 minus and I want to get these to match, I need to multiply by 3 over here. 3 times 1 um, would give us plus 3. And so I'm going to show that by putting brackets around my ammonia and writing a subscript 3 right there. This way the positive charges balance out with the negative charges. I have three pluses all together and a 3 minus. Okay, so the next one is tin, and I already, I already said that Sn is tin. This time it has Roman numerals. IV means 4, so that means the charge of the tin is 4. It does not ever mean that there's four tins, so I would never write it down here as a subscript, okay? That's a common mistake. And then we see carbonate. Carbonate is also on the back of the periodic table. So you look, it's toward the bottom, maybe the last quarter part of the page, and it says a carbonate is CO3 with a 2 minus charge. Okay, so if I have a 4 plus and a 2 minus, the, the best way to get them to balance out is if I multiply the negative 1 by 2, and then I get a 4 minus and a 4 plus. So I'm going to show that by putting parentheses and a 2 there. Okay, for this one, we have um, the formula, and we got to convert it. So again, I use that flow chart a lot, but I notice right away that the first letter is an H. So that gives me a good indication of what to expect. Okay, so here we go. So does the first part start with an H? Yes, it does. So we're going up to the top. So then that means the compound is an acid. Does the anion contain oxygen? So we go back. Oops, too far. We go back here. This is the anion. That's the negative charged part. And it does have oxygen in it. Okay, so yes, it has oxygen in it. Check the ending of the anion. Oh, okay, this is referring to the periodic table. So I'm going to check the ending on the back of my periodic table. I'm looking for CrO4. So CrO4 is about a quarter of the way, well, three quarters of the way down the page. And it says the name of that is chromate. So I'm going to write that down. Chromate is the name of that stuff. Chromate, CrO4, 2 minus. Okay, so it's chromate, A-T-E, brings us this way. So A-T-E becomes ic acid. Okay, so chromate is going to become ic acid. So chrome, chrome ic acid. And it didn't say anything about naming the H specifically because by having the word acid there, you're, you're actually saying that it has H in it. So the name of this stuff is chromic acid. So chromate becomes ic. Um, Okay, so the next one, the next one is 
S2O3. And we said that was a covalent complex. So let's see here. Let's see if we can follow the, the graph here, or flowchart rather. So S2O3, the first letter is not an H, so that brings us down here. Is it binary? Oh, we already we already answered that question in the first part of the thing. And we said, yes, it is binary. Um, oops, I went the wrong way. I went the wrong way. Okay, so yes, it's binary. Is there a metal present? Okay. S and O are both in group 16, so those are both non-metals. So no. So we're going to use IDE and the Greek prefixes. Okay. So the Greek prefixes indicate how many of each atom there are. And um, we kind of need a list of all of them. We'll do that at the end of the presentation here. But two, the Greek prefix for two is di. And then I just name the next thing. So disulfur. And the Greek prefix for three is like a triangle. So tri. And it says, let's see, what was the last part? Let's see, it says that the the ending is IDE, so oxygen becomes oxide, so Y-G-E-N comes off and we just get oxide. So this should be called disulfur trioxide. Okay, in this next one, we've got another situation where it, it has H in the beginning, so we go up to the top. And then, um, okay, there is an oxygen present, so... Yes, check the ending of the anion. Okay, so again, this is on the periodic table then if it's telling me to do that. So I look for SO4. Oh, that's called a sulfate. So it's an ATE again. So it's pretty similar to what we have up here. So I'm going to guess that this ATE gets canceled out and we call it ic acid. And that's pretty close, actually. The real name of this thing, we add a couple more letters to make it sound a little better. So sulfuric acid, which is a, a compound that we have used in class before. We used it in lab, actually. So I've heard of it before. Okay, and then we have, um, let's see, we did this one. Okay, we did that one just now. Um, then we have sulfuric acid, but it's not an acid because it's not AQ. In order to be an acid, it's got to be AQ. Um, if that's true, then I have to choose to name this a little bit differently. Okay, so when it doesn't say AQ, I'm actually going to pretend like it's a binary compound. So I'm going to sort of, uh, you know, make a note to myself. When acids are not AQ, I come down here. And so then I ask myself, okay, is there a metal present? So I'm looking at this one, H2SO4. There's no metal. It's all non-metals. So I come down here. Is there a polyatomic ion present? Okay, yes, it's this SO4 thing. Okay, and so yes, name as a binary compound with the eight or eight endings. Oh, okay, so that means I get to use the Greek prefixes. Binary means Greek prefixes, and so we have two H's here. Um, I have two H's, so I would call it dihydrogen. And then, uh, for the polyatomic group, I just keep it the way it is, right off the back of the periodic table, and it's called sulfate. So dihydrogen sulfate is what we would actually call that one. And finally, for the naming, we have lead. Uh, PB is lead. Um, so that's a metal. So when we follow this chart, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got PB3 and 2, it says. So H is not in the beginning. So is it binary? Yeah, because there's two different elements, right? PB and N. Is there a metal present? Yes, because lead is a metal. So we're going to use the Greek pref... Oh, I went the wrong way. Oh, wait. Does the metal form more than one cation? Oh, this means I need to find the metal on the front of the periodic table. And, and in this case, lead can be plus two or plus four. So yes, it has multiple choices. And then it says here, I want to have the name of the cation, then the charge, and then it ends in IDE. So the cation is the first thing um, in the formula. So the name of the cation here is lead. And then I have to show the charge. I don't know what it is yet, so we're going to just leave a blank spot. When we show charge of a metal, we always use Roman numerals. So metals are Roman numerals. 
Non-metals get to use the Greek prefixes. I cannot mix the two. That's really, really important. Okay, and then I have nitrogen, and it said it ends in I-D-E, so I'm going to take nitrogen and turn it into nitride. So I take off the last few letters, nitride, nitrogen. Okay, so then I look on the periodic table, and I see that nitrogen is in group 15. So if I drew the Lewis structure, it would look something like this. And so that means that nitrogen is really looking to absorb three electrons to complete its octet. So this has a three minus charge. And then, um, let's see, I've got two of those, though. It says there's two of them right here, so that's a total of a negative six charge. So my lead has to balance that out. If I'm going to have, it's got to have a plus six. It's got to be equal and opposite. But I have three of them, so I'm going to take plus six and divide it by three to get the overall charge of plus two. So I'm going to show that with Roman numerals right there. Okay, so that's all the names for this chapter.